try to go through life making sure that I give people the benefit of the doubt most of the time, but unfortunately I've learned by doing that, it's exactly what's gotten us in this position in the first place. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And the AAA video game industry is currently in shambles and crashing down. Thomas Mahler, who I've spoken about previously, you know, the guy that completely dismantled Alyssa Mercante in a series of tweets, that guy, he took to Twitter again recently talking about his thoughts on the AAA video game industry. And in what could only be described as a massive wall of text going through step by step exactly what's wrong with the entire video game industry today, Thomas Mahler has summed up exactly what the problems are and how to fix them. But don't hold your breath. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down Thomas Mahler's thoughts on Twitter about the AAA video game industry and why it's failing. Thomas Mahler, the CEO of Moon Studios, you know, the guy that was in charge of Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori Will of the Wisps, and now more recently known for No Rest for the Wicked on Early Access available on Steam for $40 USD. And honestly, after checking this game out and seeing more information about it, I'm actually gonna take the dive in purchasing it because it looks absolutely epic, but that's neither here nor there. He recently tweeted a scathing critique about the AAA gaming industry, identifying a decline that he sees as inevitable while also highlighting why no one should be expecting any kind of improvement anytime soon. It is absolutely not a surprise to me that a lot of AAA studios have been struggling lately, and my prediction is that it won't really get better anytime soon. I know it sounds absurd, but most of the game studios out there that hit it big were at one point just a small group of passionate folks that wanted to make games together. In a lot of the cases, they were just friends. And if they were lucky, they found out in the process that they actually made a great team together. You know, the whole coming together naturally for a shared vision of a passion project. The whole thing that comes to mind with id Software and the initial Doom creation or the original GoldenEye team or hell, even with Nintendo and Miyamoto and a small group of people that worked on the original Super Mario World and even before then. Yes, I understand it. AAA games have gotten a lot bigger and a lot more massive in scale, but in that lies the problem. Then the games they created struck a chord and now they scale up and become a massive studio. And then lots of other folks come in and demand this and that and unknowingly change the culture and the approach. And then some suddenly wonder what happened to this or that great studio that always delivered in the past once they're not delivering the same quality products anymore, even though everything changed in their approach to making games. As the studios are growing, getting bigger, and the budgets are becoming absurdly abnormal, looking at you, probably monsters, now Firewalk Studios, and the rumored 400 plus million dollar loss being taken on Concord currently, as Exhibit A, for exactly what's wrong with the AAA gaming industry. They feel like they just pour more and more money into it and it will just fix all the problems, when in fact the problem is that the people at the center making the game don't have a good vision. As these studios are growing, they're inviting an influx of new and of course diverse employees and external demands. And that often shifts from creative passion to meeting corporate objectives, which in turn gets into something I'll talk about later in this video, but basically, involving HR and making sure that everything is above board and properly politically correct because we we want to walk on eggshells. We want to make sure we don't offend anybody in the halls of the workspace because that has taken center stage and priority over the games they're working on. And at the end of the day, the reality is gamers don't give a crap about how the game gets made, how awful the person is making it, whatever they're saying or doing behind the scenes. If the game itself stands on its own merits, it will sell. And that's something that these bigwig corpos keep forgetting. They're prioritizing the wrong things. This isn't me advocating for a bad work environment or a bad place to work. It's just the truth. The reality is the people with the talent got pushed out, pushed to the side by people that had agendas with propaganda and ideologies that have taken the forefront instead of games themselves. But Mahler continues and now he goes on to talking about how the music music industry is a perfect analogy for why the expansion kills the vibe. I've compared companies to bands in the past because I think that analogy helps a lot of people understand that we're really dealing with the same issues here. Take the Beatles. 
they become successful, but now their record company tells John, Paul, Ringo, and George how they should write their songs, and, by the way, now they should also hire Lisa, Stuart, Shane, and Mary, and have them be a part of the songwriting team so they can produce more stuff, and of course these new folks should have the same say because otherwise we might just face diversity issues. Does anybody really think that we would have gotten the same output that they had by doing it this way? Because that's what they always say and claim and champion that diversity breeds higher quality products and better games and more people involved and, and the culture comes together. When in reality, the culture that takes place with these original teams is pure passion. They don't care about where someone's from. They don't care about your gender. They want people that care about the shared vision. But that's the problem with all of this is the people that are coming in, especially via the DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion line, they're people that may enjoy video games. Hell, it's just like the game industry with the journalists. I'm sure some of them enjoy playing video games, at least casually. And they're like, hey, I could apply for this job. I'm not really qualified for any real job. So I'll just work at this game company or this game journalism outlet. And I'll talk about video games because it's my passion and I can make a buck and tell people, hey, I work on video games. How cool is that? When in reality, that's all it is, is they're trying to use it as a, as a badge of honor, like I'm in the game industry, instead of actually contributing something of substance. And in reference to changing up the Beatles, he continues, no, of course not. And it's no different for game studios or any other group of talented people that produce art together. You have to keep that magic alive that made it all work in the first place. We're dealing with humans here, and all too often, the industry seems to forget that. They look at these people as cogs in a machine that are extremely replaceable and because you might not fit a specific diversity checkbox, you're now being passed over for someone else that isn't as qualified, but hey, everyone's replaceable, so who cares? And all of this gets at the fundamental problem in the game industry's mindset. In a race to scale up to be as big as possible, these studios are treating developers as replaceable cogs in a machine, assuming that any talent can replace the success of the original team. And we've all seen the devastating effects of this trend across numerous studios that once produced groundbreaking games, but now they're churning out forgettable throwaway titles. The lack of respect for the magic that Mahler's described means that instead of fostering environments where people feel connected and valued with innate passion, studios now instead push deadlines, add unnecessary layers of bureaucracy, and alienate the original team. It's no wonder that many AAA games that are coming out these days feel so hollow. Mahler's tweet points to an industry plagued by issues of scale, culture loss, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and obsessions in rapid expansion, all coming from the big wigs of these massive companies just trying to squeeze an extra buck any way they can to appease shareholders, instead of, I don't know, making an amazing game. It's a manifesto for the gaming industry on the whole, and what it could be if it remembered its roots. He points out, until these studios start prioritizing keeping the magic alive, AAA gaming will continue the unfortunate descent into obscurity and mediocrity. The industry needs more leaders like Mahler, who value artistic vision over market share, who champion culture over corporate demands. They shout down the insidious attempts at injecting DEI, pushing ESG scores, and prioritizing equality quality over quality. Mahler's voice is vital as it speaks to both the developers and fans frustrated by the current direction of AAA game studios. While he doesn't hold back on the problems, he also implicitly issues a challenge. Remember the humanity behind the art. Emphasizing the culture, creativity, and the original spark, Mahler, just like so many other gamers out there, wants to return to the basics. And it's time for the game studios to start listening. The game industry is struggling. Back and as long as the profit continues to be prioritized over the passion, the quality that I keep talking about here, alongside the integrity with the games, is going to suffer. Gamers have extended backlogs, and if these companies don't start making decisions to change, the decision to fail will be made for them by default. Which that right there is the epicenter of the problem in all of this. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information, check out smashjt.com for the full article. I will link it in the description below. If you appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Um, we grew up playing games like A Link to the Past, Super Metroid, and 
it always bugged me that we never really had games anymore where I felt the same kind of feeling as I did as a child, right, when I played these games. So that's what we wanted to recreate, you know. The idea was, can we give people that feeling again, right? And hopefully we succeeded in that. I never really had games anymore where I felt the same kind of feeling as I did as a child, right, when I played these games. So that's what we wanted to recreate, you know. The idea was, can we give people that feeling again, right? Hopefully, we succeeded in that.